What's going on guys? Killer6 back with another top 10 video for you. And this time we're taking a look at the top 10 best assault rifles in Borderlands 3. Assault rifles make up one of the stronger class of weapons in Borderlands 3. And these are the best of the bunch. So let's get right to it. Number 10. Getting us started at number 10 is an assault rifle that is only exceptional when you get the right rolls on the parts. And getting that roll is the major challenge. Yes, I'm talking about the Boom Sickle. This is a Vladoff assault rifle that feels kind of like a shotgun, and it absolutely shreds on all four of the Vault Hunters, but it is notoriously good for Moe's. This thing does insane splash damage, and with the way splash damage scales in Mayhem, that makes this gun extremely strong. Now, when farming for the Boom Sickle, please note, it no longer drops from the Warden. That's where it dropped originally when the game first came out. It was moved sometime back to the loot pool of the Anointed X4, and in order to farm the anointed x4 you do need to take the malevolent practice mission from hammerlock to get him to spawn 14 percent of all sickles will roll with the boom prefix but anointed x4 only has a 15 percent drop rate for the sickle making this a pretty tough farm that said this gun is well worth having it's a lot of fun to use number nine Sliding in at number 9 is the Breath of the Dying. This dull assault rifle is a base game item just like the Sickle, and this one can be farmed from the Blinding Banshee and Desolation's Edge in Necrotefeo. It has a low drop chance of only 10%, however, so keep that in mind before you start your farm. This gun is a solid assault rifle, but its special ability is where it really shines. When you kill an enemy with this gun, a circle of orbs come out in all directions from that dead enemy, and those orbs get splash damage at 12 times the damage of the killing blow. So if you hit a big killing blow, you're going to have some crazy damage coming out from these orbs. Obviously, that means extreme damage in mayhem levels where you get the benefit of the splash, and it also means this gun is an exceptional mobbing weapon, but what might surprise you is the crazy damage you can do to bosses and larger enemies with the orbs. You can essentially one-tap Wotan's final phase with this gun. The breath is highly underrated and highly underused. One thing you do need to watch out for, though, is you can absolutely down yourself with the orbs, so be aware of those. Number 8. Coming into number 8 is the Contained Blast. This DLC 3 assault rifle is one of the more surprising entries on this list for a lot of people, I imagine. This gun shoots out gyro jets that will explode on impact, but some will also stick to an enemy and explode on reload or after a short delay. This gun also does splash damage and can roll with splash damage anointments, unlike the boom sickle. So clearly this will wreck in the hands of Moe's, but you might be surprised by how well it will work in the hands of other Vault Hunters and Iron Man levels as well. Be on the lookout for versions with times two, which is caused by finding the right grip. So even though you might find a double penetrating version, that won't necessarily equal a times two roll. So keep that in mind. This gun is not ideal for fast moving or flying enemies, but if you can and hit it easily with this gun it will die you can get the contained blast from abadoxis and ashfall peak in dlc 3 where it is a 33 percent drop chance or it can randomly drop throughout this dlc number seven Jumping onto the list, number seven is the Rebound. This DLC 4 assault rifle is obtained only from the final boss in that DLC at a 15% drop rate. The Rebound is like a weird combination of a bunch of other weapons. It shoots saw blades that pierce through enemies. It bounces off things, or rebounds if you will, allowing you to hit the same enemy again, and then the saw blades will then explode to do even more damage. This obviously makes this a fun weapon for mobbing in heavy enemy areas, but it can also be great for slow moving or stationary bombs bosses, especially if you have a wall or surface near them to bounce this gun off of. This gun does do splash damage on Pyrrhus and on Saw Blade Explosion, but it sadly can't roll with splash damage anointments, otherwise it would rank higher in this list. That said, this gun is a lot of fun. Just shooting this thing and watching the projectiles bounce around going through enemies and doing work, it's a really fun weapon to use. Number six. Dropping in at number six is the Super Shredifier. Much like the aforementioned Boomsicle, this gun is only good when you get the right prefix. The Shredifier itself is decent, but it's the double barrel mode of the Super Shredifier that makes this gun exceptional. We're talking Jesse Ventura and Predator here. This gun will make you feel like a goddamn sexual Tyrannosaurus, insane fire rate, great damage, and it's just one of the most fun assault rifles you will ever use, guaranteed. To get this gun, you either get it as a lucky world drop or you farm the Titan in the slaughter shaft. Now, good luck with that though. Even though the Titan drops the Shredder Fire 33% of the time, only 9% of all Shredder Fires will drop with the Super Prefix, and you're even less likely to get it with the right grip, which will add an extra pellet to all of your shots as well. Number five. 
At number five is one of my favorite all-around weapons in Borderlands 3, the Clairvoyance. This Jacob's Assault Rifle can roll with a Gatlin prefix, which allows the weapon to be full auto, or, and more importantly, it can roll with a masher in the name, and when that happens, oh baby, you are going to do a lot of damage. Sadly, you cannot roll both full auto and masher, otherwise this gun would be super broken in my opinion, but you can fire as fast as you can pull the trigger since this is a Jacob's weapon. So strive to get yourself a masher version as that's the one that will give you the most all around damage. This gun drops from Critchy and Curse Haven in DLC 2 where it is a 25% drop, but only 12% of all clairvoyances are going to get the masher roll. So happy hunting. Trust me, it is absolutely worth it. One thing to look out for though when you do this farm, do not let your loot fall into the pit. Critchy is notorious for dropping his stuff in the pit so either make sure that you clean out your lost loot or it will be the most recent thing in your lost loot machine so make sure you go back to sanctuary if it does drop down the pit Number four. after a massive recent buff the becca debuts on this list at number four obtainable only by completing all of the hammerlock hunt challenges the becca can only be acquired once per character and you can't even get another one on true vault hunter mode and before you ask no you cannot get it from the diamond loot room and it will not world drop that makes this gun a real challenge to get a good one it means you're going to either need to trade to get better rolls or make a new character grind to max level complete the hammerlock hunts and then hope that you get one with good rolls on the parts. Or you can join my Discord, link in the description down below, and in the LFG section for your platform, feel free to ask other players if they can help you out. Luckily, with the addition of the anointment reroll machine in Sanctuary, you can at least change the anointment to something more useful for your character and play style. But there's three different bolt types, four different foregrips, Luckily, this gun is pretty great regardless of the rolls, but if you're a min-maxer and you're trying to get that perfect Becca, then it's going to be quite the challenge. That said, this gun is a lot of fun on all the Vault Hunters. It is especially good on Flak and Zane, but it is a lot of fun. Even if you're doing like a Phase Grasp of Mara, you can have a lot of fun with this gun. You just need to learn the proper range to shoot this thing at so that the projectiles split and do the maximum amount of damage. Number three. At number three on this list is the OPQ system. This cartel's exclusive item only drops from Joey Ultraviolet, Josie Bite, and or Franco Firewall, but only when the cartel event is in season. One of the most beloved weapons from one of the most beloved free events, the OPQ just shreds. Many people still have their level 57 version from last year before the level cap was raised, and the level 57 version still wrecks level 65 enemies. What makes this gun so good is that it shoots out projectiles that hit an enemy, and those will occasionally explode and deal shock splash damage. And since this gun shoots at a very nice rate, you can output a lot of damage with it. The gun also has an alternate firing mode that deploys a drone that is a copy of the OPQ and it can also cause the same shock splash damage when it shoots enemies. The drone will follow you around and then target any enemy that you look at. This is not only the best Atlas assault rifle, it's possibly the best all around Atlas weapon in the game. And did I mention that this is a level 57 version that I'm using in this footage and it's action skill active 200% damage with me not using my action skill, so it's basically a non anointed version of the OPQ. That's how good this gun is. Just wait till we get a level 65 version when Cartels returns on June 24th. Oh my god. Here's hoping the Gearbox makes the Cartels event permanent sometime soon. Number two. At number two is the Soul Render, and this one should be absolutely no surprise to anybody that watched my Moe's Assault Rifles only playthrough. The Soul Render just absolutely destroys, and not just for Moe's either. This gun will occasionally shoot out purple skulls that home in on enemies and deal splash damage at 20 times the base damage of the gun. In short, this gun destroys everything in sight, and you don't even need to aim at stuff. The base damage of this gun is decent enough on its own, but the skulls will mow through mobs, bosses, and frankly, anything that's in your way. To get this gun, you will need DLC 2, and you can farm it only from Tom and Zam in the Heart's Desire map around the halfway portion of the map. Both Tom and Zam have a 15% chance to drop this thing, each one, which means you can conceivably get two of them per run. Now be on the lookout for versions that have nine shots per second or lower for the fire rate, as those will be full auto versions burst fire and semi-auto are usually not very good to get with this thing 
you can make do with them but full auto is where it's at if you're on console you can speed up this farm by killing just one of the two enemies either tom or zam and then fast travel back up to the nearby fast travel station drop back in and kill one of them again this will reset them both each time you drop in allowing you to do that pretty quick now if you are on next gen or pc though saving and quitting after killing them both is a much more efficient method honorable mention Borderlands 3 has a bunch of solid assault rifle options and just missing this list are the Star Helix, the Chaos, the No Pew Pew, Saw Bar, Lead Sprinkler, Gatlin Gun, Stone Thrower, and Laser Sploder all are fun to use but just not quite good enough for this list in my opinion. Number one. Surprising probably nobody, at number one we have the Monarch. This Vladoff assault rifle can be obtained on Mayhem 6 and higher from Kilovolt and Electricity, where it drops at a 16.5% drop rate. Now, if you're like a lot of people and you hate how long this fight can take because Kilovolt will teleport halfway through, well, I have a bonus tip for you. When you get him to half health, just get right up on him while he's doing his little rage dance, and when he comes out of it, start shooting him immediately. This will keep him from teleporting. You're welcome. Now, back to the Monarch. What makes this gun so amazing is that when you enter the alternate firing mode, the gun switches to bipod mode, which means you move slower and you can't jump, but you'll also output a ton of damage in a very quick amount of time. A lot of people try for the extra projectile mode on this gun, making it times eight instead of a times four, but honestly, that'll just cost you more ammo per shot, and this thing will absolutely wreck face, even as just the times four version. And I would honestly argue that you'll likely do considerably more DPS by using the times four version version since you'll spend an absurd amount of time just reloading the gun on the times eight version instead focus on finding parts that will increase base damage and or fire rate as those are vastly more crucial to min maxing this gun even if you can find one that increases mag size but really you're going to probably increase your mag size with class mods and artifacts to get the most out of this gun if you've seen my destroyer of worlds flak build then you know that this gun can absolutely shred even the toughest enemies so do yourself a favor and start farming yourself one right now I hope you guys enjoyed this top 10 list of the best legendary assault rifles in Borderlands 3. If you did, then be sure to hit that like button, subscribe for more, and be sure to let me know in the comment section down below what is your favorite assault rifle in Borderlands 3. Thank you guys for watching. Take care.